the celebration of an event and not a date. Many today are fighting over the question of Christmas. Some say we must not celebrate it because Christ was not born in December. However, no one knows the exact date. Others say we must not celebrate Christmas because it has pagan origins. But the Bible does not give us a compelling answer whether we should celebrate it or not. Nor does the Bible give us a definite answer if we should celebrate the day that one as a sinner repents and gives his life to Christ as his Savior. However, the Bible tells us that there is joy before the angels of God over one sinner who repents. So we see that although the Bible does not tell us that we should celebrate the day that a sinner repents and gives his life to Christ, the angels do, and they celebrate that important day. Why do angels celebrate the day that a sinner repents and gives his life to Christ? They celebrate it because they know that this salvation and redemption has only been possible through the work of Christ on the cross. That is, if Christ had never come to this earth through a totally supernatural birth, the angels would have nothing to celebrate. However, Christ did come to this world through a supernatural birth, which has given us the opportunity to obtain salvation through our faith in the redemptive work of Jesus Christ. We also see this festive behavior of the angels on the night that Jesus was born according to the Gospel of Luke. And suddenly there was with the angel a multitude of the heavenly hosts praising God and saying glory to God in the highest and on earth peace among those with whom he is pleased. On the day Jesus was born, the angels weren't celebrating a date because the Bible doesn't tell us that. Rather, they were celebrating the event. This is clear from the statement made in Luke 2.11. For unto you is born this day in the city of David a Savior, who is Christ the Lord. After the angels' announcement of the birth of Jesus, we see a multitude of heavenly hosts coming together. Being together, they began to celebrate the event and not a date. So was it correct and biblical for the angels to celebrate the birth of Christ? The answer lies in the fact that God allowed this event to be part of the canon of the Bible, which we have and read today. Remember that the Apostle Paul once wrote, For whatever was written in former days was written for our instruction, that through endurance and through the encouragement of the Scriptures we might have hope. Our hope is that not only was Jesus born, but He gave His life on the cross and rose again. Because if Christ has not been raised, then our preaching is in vain and your faith is in vain. We also can say that if Christ had not been born, then our preaching or celebration would be in vain. In vain would also be the celebration of these angels. What we can see here is that the date is not important. Rather, the event is the most important thing. The fact that he was born and the reason behind that birth. Today, many use pagan genealogies to give a defense about the fact that we should not behave like the angels on the day Jesus was born. That is, celebrate the birth of Jesus. However, you should remember that any defense we use to establish a biblical standard should come from the very word of God. We cannot defend a biblical issue with pagan genealogies, that is, with writings that cannot be found in the Word of God. Our explanation of such things should come only from Scripture, and if we do not have the Scriptures as our defense and our position, then our defense is baseless and not valid. When we try to defend our position on manners such as Christmas, using pagan genealogies outside of Scripture, we begin to deviate from the Word of God. Why? Because we put more importance to pagan genealogies found outside the scriptures and we put the word of God aside. This is a dangerous thing because when we leave the word of God out of any manner concerning a biblical position, we are telling God, in other words, that we do not need his help to establish norms concerning the Christian life. By doing this, we at the same time give way to divisions among our brothers and sisters in Christ. These disputes or divisions do not bring anything edifying to the life of the Christian and are not of God. The enemy of our souls from the Garden of Eden to the little manger in Bethlehem has wanted to stop God's plan for our redemption. However, he was not successful in the garden or in the manger and much less on the cross.
The Apostle Paul himself warned the New Testament church concerning the use of pagan genealogies found outside of the Word of God to establish standards of the Christian life. Paul said, avoid foolish controversies, genealogies, dissensions, and quarrels about the law, for they are unprofitable and worthless. When we enter into discussions on the manner of Christmas and whether one should celebrate it or not, we enter into foolish disputes that do not bring edification to the Christian. Paul knew that such questions using pagan genealogies outside of God's word would not be edifying to the church. In Colossians 2.16, Paul gives us an even stronger defense concerning these foolish questions when he said, Therefore, let no one pass judgment on you with regard to a festival. Many today are using pagan genealogies to establish doctrinal standards. This is nothing new in our time, because even in the time of the early church, we see that the same thing was happening. That is why Paul told the young pastor Timothy, after begging him to stay in Ephesus, because some were teaching a different doctrine. Paul told Timothy not to give heed to fables and endless genealogies, which minister questions, rather than godly edifying, which is in the faith. So do. One of the strongest scriptures that is being used today to say that the celebration of the birth of Christ, that is Christmas, is something that we should not celebrate and that it is pagan is found in Jeremiah 10, 1 through 5. Such scripture says, Hear the word that the Lord speaks to you, O house of Israel. Thus says the Lord, Learn not the way of the nations, nor be dismayed at the signs of the heavens, because the nations are dismayed at them. For the customs of the peoples are vanity. A tree from the forest is cut down and worked with an axe by the hands of a craftsman. They decorate it with silver and gold, and they fasten it with hammer and nails so that it cannot move. Their idols are like scarecrows in a cucumber field, and they cannot speak. They have to be carried, for they cannot walk. Do not be afraid of them, for they cannot do evil, neither is in it them to do good. Many have used verses 3 and 4 as a basis concerning what is known as the Christmas tree. However, if we study the entire biblical section, we realize that God was talking about idols and images carved and made from the trunk of a tree. He also talks about a craftsman who shapes the wood. This is verified in verse 8 of the same chapter, 10, of Jeremiah, when he says, But they are altogether brutish and foolish. The stock is a doctrine of vanities. Later in the same chapter, in verses 9 through 11, we read the contrast between false gods and the true God, the Creator. And in verses 14 and 15, they speak of idols and images that are worthless and that they should give shame to those who make them because such have no life. So after we see these verses, we realize that it does not speak about the birth of our Savior, Jesus Christ, and much less a tree known as a Christmas tree. So the question remains, should the Christian celebrate Christmas? The word Christmas comes from the Latin word that means birth. So should the Christian celebrate the birth of Jesus? A truly grateful person celebrates the birth of Christ every day of his or her life, because that person recognizes that if Christ had not been born, there would be no death on the cross and resurrection, which would give us our redemption. That is why the enemy of our souls wanted to stop this birth by placing various obstacles on Mary and Joseph to prevent it. However, God's plan triumphed, and in a manger in Bethlehem, Jesus was born. On that day, the angels celebrated an event and not a date. The same can be said of those who have taken advantage of this time to speak of that event and not of the date. Pagan genealogies are of no use to a world without Christ. Using a text out of context is of no use to those who wish to walk according to the light of God's word. There is no doubt in our minds that during this time of the year, something happens to the people around us. Even an indifferent person can briefly experience the spirit of that event and that manger thousands of years ago. That event which Micah declared when he said, But thou Bethlehem Ephrathah, Though thou be little among the thousands of Judah, yet out of thee shall he come forth unto me, that is to be the ruler in Israel, whose goings forth have been from of old, from everlasting. So this season, our focus 
is not what a world without Christ celebrates. Our joy is from an event and not a date. That event was the birth of our Lord and Savior, Jesus Christ.